Okay, um, first of all, I probably should address, I actually teach at Betsy Lane High School. Um, this project wouldn't make, make a lot of sense if I were looking at it from an elementary approach. So it is from a high school anatomy class, um, but it's entitled Going Out on a Limb, and my students were actually designing prosthetics. Um, when I first went for this project and I was going for the grant, one of the things that I was taking into a lot of consideration is a lot of times I focus on my life science classes like my biology, my dual credit biology, because that's kind of where my heart's rooted because those are the classes that I tend to be drawn to. But being the only life science teacher that we have, I also do our anatomy course. And sometimes it's kind of hard in that class for the kids to understand that aside from dissections, Sometimes there's not a lot of labs that we can actually do, so sometimes it's a little bit of a struggle to get the hands-on students involved. Um, so what I did for this is we actually had some inspiration for the project. Um, we have a student in class who actually um, friends with another student in our school who has a disability where they don't have a hand. I have a student in class who has a sibling that has a major hip problem and just in conversation one day we were just kind of talking about prosthetics and how far things have came along and just in googling different prosthetics with them in class and in conversation I actually found this picture of what we consider a completely bionic man and the fact that we literally can design almost an entire human body using prosthetic pieces. And I pulled this up and it was about a week before the grant proposals were finished and I typed this grant up in two days because what I wanted to do was I wanted to give them a chance to do some research on prosthetics but also to market something on their own. Um, the purpose for the investigation was to get my students to actually engineer something. Um, I wanted them to not just look at prosthetics that were already on the market. I kind of was looking for that idea for them to analyze what was out there and see what kind of interesting things they could find that maybe they're not necessarily being sold right now, but maybe just patents and prototypes and things that were out there. Um, I have a lot of students in this class who are actually looking medical field, so anything that I could do to pique their interest or maybe even throw a new career out there to them, because a lot of times they don't think medical engineering, they just think medicine. So it gave a little bit of capability there, but it allowed my students to interpret some data. So first of all, they were looking at numbers of people affected by different disabilities. Um, analysis of the problem that impacts them, like if it was a hand, how do they grasp things? How do they move things? How do they write? And they actually had to figure out what kind of everyday problems that they were dealing with because of disabilities. So it pulled in a little bit of occupational therapy for them. Um, problem solving, when they started to design their prosthesis, I kind of turned them loose right after my skeletal unit. I did that part with them fully. They learned the bones, the structures, and we handled that part. But as I moved into the musculature and we were talking tendons, ligaments, and actual function, I backed off. And that's hard for me sometimes because, you know, you want to tell them everything. You want to get them there. You want to make sure they cover the right things. But what I did was I used this grant to actually tie those two units together. Um, the kids were split into small groups and they actually had to design and engineer a prosthetic on their own using their research on musculature, tendons, and ligaments and then present to the class. Um, the communication of data, they had to market it to me. Um, we set it up kind of like Shark Tank where, you know, I'm either going to buy your product or I'm going to tell you what's wrong with your product and how to fix it. And it was kind of like a peer review basis for them as well then. Um, the money went into some drafting materials. I didn't have a lot of that as a science teacher. We have regular old graft paper, but I didn't have some of the tools that they would need to make some things to scale. Um, I did buy presentation notebooks and again building supplies and we have a media center and I bought some 3D filament for the printer there at school so they could build parts that they necessarily wouldn't be able to sculpt. Um, and then the plan of action I divided into a four-step process. The first thing we did was an introduction to structure and function with musculature and to introduce it instead of doing notes with them and you can kind of tell and this was supposed to be a video clip but the picture didn't work. Um, I gave them several muscle fatigue labs. So like they were looking at constant repetitive motions to see how that would fatigue an arm. Um, we looked at elevation in feet and calves. So they just did some different things so they could actually look at, okay, when the muscles are weak or an area doesn't work, how does that impact the body? And you can see them doing some of that there. Um, and then they had to start developing a device. Um, 
we don't necessarily have all the models I would like to have for an anatomy class, so we kind of relied on what we did have. Um, but in the pictures that you see up here, you can tell that the kids are working with some different things. I have one skeleton that's disarticulated, so like I had a group that was working with an arm and a hand, so they took those pieces off to their table. They worked there. I had a group that was doing the shoulder, so they needed something that was more articulated. We actually wheeled the skeleton down to the media center with us, and they were able to kind of rotate the shoulder and see how the swing worked. Um, and then from there, they started developing blueprints. They did a patent and a prototype. And this was kind of a little bit intense for me because I didn't really know how much went into developing a patent. So I got online and I started looking around to see, you know, if you actually are going to try to do a patent on something, what do you have to have? And I had to take some things away from it for time purposes from them, but I still tried to incorporate as many elements as I actually could. Um, they had to do the research for if they were going to build this, the actual materials they would use, titaniums, lightweight metals, things like that. And that was something else that I didn't even anticipate with the project. I just kept thinking the build. So there was actually some math and some calculation in there for them too. Um, the pictures here, um, this is one of our students using the 3D printer. He was getting ready to print a alternate patella, like for a knee, because we couldn't use the modeling clay. It kept chipping on us. And then um, on the other side, I had a group that used Model Magic, and they were the group that was focusing on the hip. And what they're doing there is they're working to put bands on there so their hip would actually have some swing and rotation instead of just being a model. Um, and then they got to present and market. Now, ideally when I did this, I kind of wanted them to think prosthetic, prosthetic, prosthetic because of the market, but I think some of them actually went for just modeling because they got very interested in the way things work. That is one thing that I would probably have to modify if I did it again. Um, but some things that actually kind of caught me was just the way they were thinking logically. Like when I had a group do a hand, they said, well, we want to focus more on the way the fingers move. Like can they close and then can they bend? So what they actually did was they just used regular like gauged wire and they did a casing and they actually built fingers out of like um, little hinged units that I'd purchased through the grant and their hand was functional. They could pull the black pieces, which were like tendons and ligaments, and they could get a bend, and then the red piece would close the rest of the fingers, so the hand was actually mobile. I mean, that was awesome. Um, and then on the hip, you can see all the banding. That group was concerned more about the way a hip moves, and this would be the group where I had the student with the brother who has the hip problems, and his mobility is the issue, so I was kind of glad that they focused on that. So do I see a lot of metal work? Do I see a lot of what we consider traditional prosthesis? No, but I definitely see the techniques that I wanted the kids to get from the research. Um, conclusions and outcomes. The students did present prototypes. Patent proposals were used to assess their learning. Um, in their patent pro proposals, they did have to tell me like structure, function of s numerous parts of each limb that they created. So they actually worked through the entire process. Um, one group, especially with the rotator cuff, I had some girls focus on that because they were softball players and they were curious about the injuries all the time. Um, the picture where they were using the skeleton and I was showing you the rotation, that's the group that actually worked with that. Um, and then the revisions, like I said, because I was driving it more toward prosthesis, I don't think I necessarily got them to the entire point of that. I do think I got them to the functionality of a limb and the anatomy, but I do think I would set, up, set it up more hypothetically the next time I was able to do this project so they actually do develop a prosthesis instead of just a model. Um, and I would adjust my timing a little bit. I don't think because we used the 3D printers in the media center that I allowed them enough time to print all of the parts that they would have. So that's something I think I need to put another day into my project for is just so they can print or at least some kind of evening or morning where they can come in, start things, and let them print throughout the day. And that's pretty much it. Are there any questions? Thank you all.